Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to reach out to some of you who haven't subscribed to the channel, so please do so by just clicking on the link below. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna continue and do more videos on Magic Leap. I wanna show you one of the examples that Magic Leap provides for the controller itself. I wanna show you how you can bind to the bumper, how you can bind to the trigger, also when the controller is connected and when the controller is disconnected. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, welcome again. And I'm in Unity right now, trying to get the scene set up for the input control. And what I my goal for this session is to walk you through installing all the components that we need. I was gonna do it and get it ready in advance for you, but I think it's always good to give you a refresher of that. So the only thing that I did, I created a 3D project. I'm using Unity 2018 one, the 2F1. I also downloaded the XR Legacy Import Helpers, and that's basically everything that I have done so far. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get everything else set up. And the other thing that we'll need to do is let's go to File, Build Settings. We're going to be changing this to Lumin, but before we do that, let's go ahead and go to Player Settings. And I'm gonna close out of this. In the, so there's multiple things that we can do here. The company name, I'm gonna leave it as a default company name. The name of the product, we can leave it as what it is, which is fine. Then the Auto Graphics API for Mac, we're gonna uncheck that. And we're gonna go back and may basically move OpenGL Core up and Metal down. So let's leave that. I don't wanna do that now because it's gonna force me to close. And let's go into XR settings. And yes, I'm gonna do virtual reality supported. Just wait until everything loads. And I'm gonna use single pass instance. Then let's go into the magic clip. We're gonna do the same thing, just click on it. And we're gonna do single pass instance. Let's wait until, so this is going to download and get everything ready for from the com Unity XR namespace. All right, so now that that is ready to go, let me make sure that we are good with everything else. You wanna make sure that you're always on that net for that X equivalent. And also the API compatibility level, I'm gonna set it to 4X. And I think I'm gonna leave that. I've been changing that to my company name, but I, I'm gonna leave it just so that you can change it if you wanna use this project for, for your for, for your own development. All right, so I think I got everything everything here done. All right, I'm gonna close out of this. And if we need to do something else later, we can we can always change it. And let's go into build settings, so file, build settings. Let's go ahead and change the platform. So I'm gonna select Lumin and then switch platform. And this is gonna take a minute. While that is loading, I'm going to go into my, my Magic Leap. I think it's called, yeah, Magic Leap Package Manager. And I, I don't think it's called, I've been doing this so much, I should remember that. And all right, updating packages. And I'm going to go into Unity Packages, expand it. And then click on Magic Leap Unity Package. And we're going to download the latest one, which is, at this time is 0.20.0. .0. Then I already downloaded, so I should be able to click on open folder and you'll basically get a Unity package. Double click on it. It's gonna decompress it and then show you everything that it's gonna import. So we're just gonna do it all and then click on import. And by this time I should have a template for us to be able to, to do this, but I haven't had time to, to get it done. At some point in the future, all I'll have a template ready for, for you so that you can use the command line and basically create a project with everything that is necessary. So for now, we're just gonna have to do this repeat, repeatedly. Right, so that's importing importing everything. So just as, a, just as an overview, I, I want to, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be bringing in the canvas, the head canvas that magically provided. We're gonna be modifying it. And we're also gonna be bringing the control and we'll wanna be binding some of the events that are available from the ML input and show you what you can do with some of those events. So my my goal for this is for you to be able to, you know, if you want to use the controller, you can target, you know, the bumper on the controller, you can use the trigger, and you can you, you can determine what control is active if you're using multiple controls. All right, so looks like that is good to go. And, and lastly, let's go ahead and add the open scene, which is a sample scene. And I'm gonna rename that scene. I like, let's go ahead and use 
input control scene. Oh, we can just say input control because that knowing that it's under scene, we know that it's already a scene. Okay, so that one is the one that is open. Now let's go into Magic Leap. And Magic Leap has amazing examples. I've been using a lot of their examples in everything that I'm doing. So, so if you go under Magic Leap and then examples, and also one thing to mention, we don't have any errors, which is great. Normally I get a lot of errors, so it looks like we did everything in the right, in the proper order. All right, so I'm gonna go into the controller and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm gonna copy the content and rendering, and then we're gonna go into our scene. So double click on that, and we're gonna be deleting these two, and then adding the ones that Magic Leap has. All right, so these should give us everything that we need to get going. We basically have a controller which is connecting to the. It has a controller connection handler, and it has a lot of things already set up that I don't think we really need to do and you're more than welcome to check it out and make changes if you need to so but just just so know that we have a controller which is great and we can start tracking changes the other thing that we have we also have a head post canvas which is awesome we we already we can basically start tracking changes on the on the state of the control and let me make sure that we have okay so looks like we have everything here that we need head post canvas as well you have the canvas distance that you can modify if you want it, if you want to. And then we also have the Magic Leap camera already associated with it. Okay, awesome. Let me let me go ahead and double click on the controller feedback example. And let me see what they're what they're doing. So so this is basically what, what I want to do for this session is if you want to track different events within the Magic Leap, you can Magic Leap controller, you can do things like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through some of these and how they work. And if we want to add additional events, we're gonna be able to add additional events. So instead of creating one from scratch, let's just use the one that they provide. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get going with the let's go back into Unity. And I wanna show you how that works. So I'm gonna open up the remote and we make sure that I select the oops, select the right one. So I'm gonna click on Magic Leap Remote. And let me close out of this other guy, which I didn't need, okay. So I use the Magic Leap Remote simulator a lot for tracking. So if you want to initiate an event from the controller, you can use the simulator to do that. So I'm gonna click on Start Simulator. And it's gonna take just a few seconds to get going. And if you haven't done any of these, make sure that you watch my previous videos where I go through and explain how this works, how the simulator works. All right, now that we have that going, we can basically add a room. So I'm gonna double click on this room and we can minimize this guy. And what I'm gonna do is just resize this so that we can see both of them running at the same time. The, the other thing that I have right now, so if I hit play, you're gonna see the, let's see, error controller handling, Fail starting. Okay, I know why that is. So let's go ahead and hit play to stop it. So if you go under Magic Leap and then the other thing that we need to do, go under ML Remote. Make sure that you import the support libraries because that's going to import everything that it needs in order for this scene to connect to the remote. And that's just going to take a minute. It's going to be bringing in additional files. And there we go. So it's bringing in additional files. And we should be good to go now. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my console. Hit play. And we shouldn't see we shouldn't see errors. Oh, okay, I know what's happening. One more error that we need to fix. Go into Unity. And then actually file, build settings. And let's go into player settings. Remember that step that I told you that we were gonna do that we didn't do? Well, we need to do that step. And that is to go under other settings and make sure that you move this OpenGL core up. And if you have that selected and you still see Lumin Metal, that means you, that you haven't restarted the editor. So just click on Restart Editor. And we should be able to, to use it now. So let's go ahead and, okay, we're starting the editor. I'm gonna click on the controller. Excellent. And let's wait until this is done. So opening the editor, we can, we can close out of the project settings and now we see OpenGL which is great and we see everything here okay let's hit play and see what happens 
and we're now working because I don't see and I don't see any errors. So you can see that the controller is connected. I'm getting a position of rotation. We're also seeing the trigger, the bumper, the touchpad, and gestures. So if we go here and I click on, let me make sure that I can click on the, okay, let's go ahead and click on the, these edit action bindings. And so if you want to, let's say that we want to simulate the trigger, we can go here and look at, you can look at control zero or control one. So we're going to look at control zero and we can look and see, look at the buttons. So we, we know that by looking at these, that the trigger is associated with the letter Z on my, on my keyboard. And you can override this. You can add other bindings if you want to. If we want to look at the bumper, I'm going to actually change this one. Let's say that I change the bumper and I think I can just right click. I can click on it. There we go. So you click on add and it's going to add a new binding. Let's go ahead and change that to be, instead of being the mouse button, we can do maybe a, a key. So I'm going to do X. So we have X and we also have mouse, mouse button. So we know the trigger is going to be Z. We know the bumper is going to be X. So let's go ahead and close out of this. So I'm going to hit C. And you can see that the trigger button is changing. The value is changing to 1. So I know that we are binding correctly to the button. If I hit X, you can now see that I'm hitting the bumper. So it's changing from false to true. And also the UCF UID transform is changing to yes. So those two are changing are changing as I'm changing the value. So we know that that part is working. So let's go ahead and look at some other things. So you can go and expand the control. And, and there are other things that you can override in here. You can override, you know, if you want to change the home tab and let's say that you want to bind to that, you can also bind to that. You can also look at the pitch, the rotation, the, the, the roll. So these are all things that you can simulate by, by using the, the components, the action binding components. And then that's, that's basically really helpful when it comes to your, you know, troubleshooting. So, the other thing that I that I really like to use, let me see if I can, let's go back into Visual Studio Code and let me add a new let me add a new binding here. And let's see, let's see, on controller. So you have a lot of things in here that are that are available for you. So you can say on controller, you know, button down, which we're binding already. You can look at the on controller button up. You can look at when the controller is actually connected. You can look at when the controller is actually disconnected. Also, some of the some of the, the the touchpad gestures when when one of them is ending, when one of them is starting. So there's a lot of things in here, and this is a static class. The ML input is so you can you can basically access it without actually getting instantiated, which is which is great. We can also make sure that the input has been started before we actually try to use it. So so there's a lot of things that are available there, and let me see what else we can we can bind to. Oh, you can also bind to the trigger down threshold if you wanted to know the threshold. Also the trigger up threshold. Those are things that you can you can bind to. So if you wanted to bind to other things such as you know on controller connected, all you gotta do this is using an event handler. So you can do plus and equal. And we can basically copy what we did on some of these ones. So we can copy this one here. We can say on on controller connected and we can just let's just do controller connected and we can remove everything that we have here we don't need to look at the bumper and I think everything there we go and then we can go back up and add that as a binding so we can bind it to that so in this case we are and that's not the right one it's this one right here controller connected and this is complaining because no overload for controller connected matches delegate and you want to make sure that you match the delegate and this delegate let me make sure that I let me just go ahead and on controller connect it and so it's complaining let's see on controller connected event Let's go ahead and click on it and go to definition. And we can then look at the definition of the delegate. Oh, okay, so you wanna make sure that you go up and look at the delegates because I'm using, I copy another, 
another event that doesn't really take an ML input control button. In this case, this all, all it needs to know is about the controller ID. So we gotta go back in here and basically change the change this guy. Because this is not initiated by a button, it's initiated by a state, a change of state. So the controller is getting connected, and then this will tell us which controller is getting is connected. And we can basically just say debug.log here. And if I can type debug.log, there we go. And then we can just say, okay, this is gonna be this is the controller that is getting connected. We can say controller with ID was connected. And we can use a string interpolation. Excellent. And dollar sign. So there we go. So that's how we can bind to that's how we can bind to a new a new action. The other thing that we can do, we can also say input the on controller disconnected. And we can do the exact same thing that we did with the other one, except we will need to say disconnect it, and we will need to add a new a new event. So that's okay. We can go here and just copy this section, and we can say controller disconnect it. Excellent. And we can change the name here and say disconnect. Uh, Make sure that I type that correctly. All right, so that should work. Now let's go back up. And another thing that you need to make sure, and this happen, this happens to, to be something that you need to do with any type of event that you're registering. So make sure that you, when you register them, you also destroy them. So this is so you can keep, you know, your 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 game, your experience, performance. So there we go. So you want to add them, but you also need to remove them. And let's go back. And also look at how Magic Leap is using the input started, because they want to make sure that you know the the input has been started before actually removing the binding. So now we can go back in into Unity, and let me go ahead and make sure that I open it. And I think it's just taking a little bit of time. And there we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of resources to run the the remote and Unity at the same time. So if that happens, it's okay. I'll just close out of this. And if this doesn't respawn, we'll go ahead and just I'll just force quit. And let me go back here and click on Magic Clip. Reopen the the project. Just wait a few seconds here. And until everything gets recompiled. So, so that kind of gives you an overview of when to use the ML input, how to bind the, how to bind some of the actions. I show you some of the actions that we were already available in this example, and then we also added additional actions such as controller connected and disconnected. So let me go ahead and connect the, let me let me close out of this guy, and it's okay. Just close out of it, and I think everything is closed. All right, and. Let me reopen the remote. Just gonna open that guy. And we're just gonna restart the simulator. And it looks like everything is green and it should open up the scene that we had. So I'm just gonna open the hello cube room. All right, so now we should be good to go. And I want to look at the console just to make sure that our new events are added. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And we're going to hit play, and we can see. So you can see that we're getting the events. The controller with ID ID was connected. In this case, ID is zero. This is the phrasing here. Let's fix that really quick. Because I want to make sure that you have that proper English in your example. So we can say, let me just remove this here with ID. And we can say ID number. And that's the ID number, what's connected. And we can just move this as well. And with the ID, was disconnected. Okay, let's go back into Unity, and I'm going to hit play. There we go, and we should see now that the the phrase makes more sense now. Let's go back into our simulator. Let's look at Unity, and let me open up the. And the reason why it doesn't show is because I already had this running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the this from playing. 
Okay, let's go back into the remote. And I'm going to start the simulator. Yes, I want to continue. So it's going to restart everything, shut down the server, bring it back on. So this is just very similar to you starting the Magic Leap. It's just basically simulating it. And I'm going to hit plus here to open the room. Okay, and then we're going to hit play here. Make sure that we can see the new message. And we're not seeing the message because we're already, we're already running. Let's try something else. Let's try, let's go ahead and start from scratch. So I'm going to close out of this, close out of this guy. All right. Now we can go ahead and open up the remote and also open up our scene. And there we go. So that's one thing about me that I don't, I hardly give up. And I want to show you this, that this is working and and that's one of the things that I try to do is on every video, I want to make sure that you your takeaway is that something work and you can use it for production. All right, so that is up and running. We're going to click on the room to bring it up. Now we're up in here and I'm going to hit play. And there we go. So now you can see that we're getting the right message. The controller with ID was connected and we get the ID zero. And if I hit play, then we should see, I don't know if this is going to show us the disconnection, but I know for sure that that message is going to, is going to work when you are unbinding, when you are disconnecting. So, and control disconnected. So that's basically what I wanted to cover in this session. The, the other thing that I will have you do on your own time is make sure that you look at how this handle, the handle on button up is basically coded. It's very similar to what we did before except that we have a new argument that is passed in and that's because the delegate it also takes in an ml input controller button and the same thing with the trigger instead of taking in a ml input controller button it's passing in the value so let me just show you one more time how you can look at the delegates if you have questions like that so whenever you're looking at ml input if there's a method that you want to bind to you an event that you want to bind to right click on that and then go to definition that's going to take you to the delegate but you won't be able to see what the what the signature is and then if you click on it it'll show you the definition of the delegate so in here you can see everything that is needed on every one of those delegates you can see that this this takes in a byte a controller id also a ml input controller touchpad gesture so this is basically your little bible to find out what is required so i hope that was helpful guys thank you all right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Also, find me in Patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. Also, early access to source code. So thank you very much, guys.